So if your church is looking to take an empty room and turn it into a studio for testimonies, interviews, and talking head videos, then this video is for you because we're gonna learn how to take a room that looks like this and turn it into a room that looks like this. Let's hop into it. So first off, I wanna show you everything that I use to create this space. Now, of course, there are plenty of other options. There are plenty of different options that you can choose from when it comes to microphone, lights, backdrop, pretty much anything. There are multiple different answers and the stuff that I use is not the right answer. I'm just gonna show you what I am using right now and some stuff that I personally like and would recommend to you. And in the future, I am planning on making more videos talking about budget items for setups like this. I won't go into too much detail into all these things. I'll just kind of list them out for you. But first off, starting with the camera, I'm using the Sony a6300. It is a huge bang for your buck as far as cameras go. And if you're doing church work, it's a great one. The only con for a situation like this is that it stops recording after 15 minutes and it may be prone to overheating if recording at 4K for long periods of time. For lighting, I am using the, let me get the name, where's the name? <laughs> I don't know the name. What's the name of these? And so for lights, I'm using the Lycos Bicolor Lights. Now this kit may exceed your church's budget. Uh, if you can swing it, these are great options to go with because they have more use than just here in an interview setup. They also work well for any situation if you're just shooting B-roll around the church and you need some extra lighting to help light up a room. I've used it in that situation. I've used it during VBS when I needed lights in some of the darker rooms. The pack that I have has three lights and three stands, all very small, lightweight, so they break down easy and they all fit into a little suitcase box that I can wheel with me. And so all around, very versatile, very lightweight, compact, small, comes with their own chargeable batteries, a solid option if you have the extra money. Although again, I'm planning to do some cheaper options as far as lights coming here soon for a setup like these. I'm going to also be working on even a DIY project for a light source that'll work for interview setups that'll be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And of course for the backdrop, I don't know what the name of it is, but I'll have it linked down. <laughs> I have it linked in the description below, the link to uh, the backdrop and the stands and the pole that all holds everything up behind me. And you can get multiple different colors. You don't have to go with white, but that's just the one that I chose. You can go with uh, black or you can go with a dark gray or something like that. Um, but white is what I chose and I like it. It looks pretty clean. So for audio, Right now, I'm using the Rode NTG2. Uh, it's a solid microphone. There's definitely cheaper options, but there's definitely more expensive options. It's a great shotgun microphone. I won't go into detail on what shotgun microphones are if you're not familiar with that, but it's a perfect microphone for this type of interview talking head situation. And for the cable, it's just a normal XLR cable. If you don't have one, you can steal one from your worship team. <laughs> From the XLR, it is going straight into my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is an audio interface that plugs straight into my laptop. So that's pretty much a quick look at the gear that I'm using. Now I'll give you a show around the room. All right, so I pretty much got this room set up how I want it. And I'll just go through here and show you everything. Key light right here, aiming towards uh, the person here. Um, microphone and I'm running that into my audio interface into my laptop and I'll record that through either Logic or Adobe Audition. All right, so then I got my light right here that is lighting up this backdrop. And then right here, I got my hair light. So this will be bouncing off the head of the person sitting in the chair. For that, I just used this old stand that I found so this is my setup and I hope this helps you if you're trying to come up with ideas for your church. If you have made it to this point in the video without clicking away, honestly, thank you. I appreciate it. 
And hopefully that means that you were able to learn something from this, or at the very least you found it entertaining. So please, if you made it this far, leave a comment below. I'll read every single one and I'll respond to every single one. I wanna know your thoughts. Was this video helpful? What did you learn from it? And if there's something else you wanna see, let me know. I'd love to help you guys out, make a video showing you how to do anything you're interested in learning. Um, because honestly, it is tough trying to learn this stuff on your own. If you're in a position similar to like I was a few years back, you're at a church and you're trying to make videos, you're trying to do these multimedia thing, you're trying to help your church grow in this new multimedia online digital era, but you're just not sure how to do <laughs> quite everything or you're not sure how to do anything, <laughs> I don't know. But nevertheless, the beauty of this era is that you can get help from people like me and other great people on YouTube with plenty of other tutorials and helpful tips. So seriously, if you've made it this far, let me know. Also, of course, subscribe because I am planning on making more videos similar to this, talking about other things, talking about other lights, other budget-friendly lights, 